I will, towards the end, show you the links to download them. And I've already talked with Liz. We will send an email out with those links again. So if you don't have uh, pencil and paper handy, you'll get those emailed to you so you can uh, download these products and uh, get to use them yourself. So first off, I'm going to talk about Earthenview, And this is the newest one. I I've just started using this product. Uh, we've actually got one of our clients introduced us to this. Um, they do uh, engineering architecture firm and Earthenview is great for pictures. So how I use it is, so in social media or any kind of marketing materials, you're asked to provide pictures and they've got to be a certain size. And, you know, they want that 150 by 150 picture of you and it's got to be that exact size and it gets frustrating getting the pictures just right or you're trying to change your heading on LinkedIn and the LinkedIn um, specifies how big that picture can be and it has to be that exact picture size picture. And I get frustrated. I've got some really sophisticated photo editors, but I just wanted something quick and easy to change pictures and Earth Review is free. Uh, he does ask for a donation. Uh, Irfan is the last name, is the name of the person that actually wrote it. It's been around a long time. Uh, he would like a donation, but it is technically free. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that to edit a picture right now. Uh, I'm going to flip screens here and reshare it. Uh, Liz, do you see a picture of a happy lady on the screen? I sure do. Okay, so this is Irfan View. Um, I brought her picture up. One of the things you should notice right off the bat with this picture in the lower right hand corner, and I hope you guys can see it on the share, it tells you the size of the picture. The size on the hard drive, the date of it, but it's a 1024 by 558 uh, is the dimensions and pixels of this picture. So I know to start what size picture I'm working with. Uh, one of the, so I'm gonna just show you a couple of quick things I can do. So, um, Let's say you need to get a 200 by 200 picture of this person for like, um, you know, a, a picture for mm. a Facebook or LinkedIn profile pic. Um, this picture is pretty big right now because it's a 1024 by 581. So one of the things I'm gonna do is if you go up here to image, you can go down and you can resize it. And what's really cool, you can resize it by different ways. You can specify the width and height and you can see there's my current size in pixels. Or you can do it as a percentage or you can do these standard percentages that you see mentioned. So this is great when you're dealing with websites, marketing materials, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, I happen to know that dropping it 50% is gonna make this go a little better for me. And then I'm gonna take her picture. Let's say I wanna make this like a profile picture. As I'm drawing this, if you notice in the far up left-hand corner, it's showing you what pixel size my box is. So if I'm looking for 200 by 200, I'm right now I'm at 191 by 201 in the upper left-hand corner. So I can shoot for, I can be real careful here and probably hit this really close, uh, roughly there for a 200 by 200. If I go over here to image, I can go down and, um, hold on, size manipulation. I can go down and I can cut this. Well, I can also flip it around, but I'm going to cut it. Hold on a second. Sorry, edit, it's under edit. I'm, I'm just start, I'm just learning this. And I'm going to crop selection. And suddenly I have just her picture. Everything else is cropped out. I can also go over here to image. And if I want to jazzy it up, I can add um, a border or frame around it. And you can pick the colors. There's tons of variations of borders you can put. I can click OK. And now I got a border here. And I can drop this into my LinkedIn profile, you know, Facebook, whatever. It's a real easy way to, to just get a hold of pictures and manipulate them. It, I mean, if you go down here, you can, I can flip it around, rotate it. I can change it to black and white. Um, there's just tons of things I can do with this. The other cool thing is, and, and I get, I kind of get to playing with, the, I love picture editing. So I get to playing with stuff. 
I can always go back to file and say reopen and I'm back to the original picture the way it was when I opened it. So I can undo stuff very easily. It does have an undo click, but I can take it back to the original um, with just that effort. Um, something else you can do that I think is really cool. So let me do, I won't resize it this time. I will do the crop again. Um, and I don't know a good business use for this, but it's really cool. You can go down here to shadows and shapes and I can specify here a snowflake, hit okay. And I've got a snowflake cut out, which I thought was really cool. Undo that image, go back. And then I can put like a star on here and cut it into a star. And the background's white, but you can change the background colors and everything. So I just think this is really cool for marketing, kids projects, uh, stuff for your website. Uh, once again, I can go back to file and just say reopen back to the original. So that is Irfan View for editing files uh, quickly, pictures quickly for marketing, website, any place where they specify it's got to be this many pixels by this many pixels. This is a quick and easy way of doing it. So that is my first one. If you have any questions, you can throw them in the chat there. Uh, Liz, just let me know if you see anything. Sounds great. That's amazing. Yep. So that's that's a, a really cool one. Now I'm going to jump. Ever, like struggled with Facebook event covers, yes. photos versus group cover photos, which oddly all of those things are different. That is yes. so, so helpful. And he has, there are hundreds of plugins to do different features and mm -hmm. people write them for this program. I didn't even, this is scratching the surface of what this can do because I just saw immediately, I just love the way and quickly edit pictures. But um, check this out. It's actually pretty powerful. All the different plugins um, uh, really, really getting to know this product, especially coming, I've, I've used some of the bigger products. They're very complicated. This is an odd, I think I like it. Um, for my next product, I am going to do another screen share and I'm going to jump to my web page. Do you see my web page there, Liz? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Hold on. Got, I failed to hit the last button. There we now go. do you see it? There you are. Okay. So the next product is called Calendly and it's to help you schedule time. Uh, it's great for helping you schedule time for like a conference and you're sending time back and forth. Um, and I will demonstrate that here in a second. Right now, I'm going to show you how I use it on my web page. Um, so in the lower right hand corner of my web page, it has scheduled time with me and I'll click on that. And it'll come up with a box. This is showing my exact Outlook calendar right now. And it's showing you opportunity places. You can do a 15, it's for 15 minute consult and you can pick a day and a time. So I'm gonna pick Thursday at 11.30 AM confirm. And I'll put, you know, um, name, email address, um, a phone number to reach me, you know, to reach me at, um, um, and I have a thing on here to ask about, unfortunately, salespeople sometimes hit this, but this is a uh, great in the schedule event, and that will actually drop right to my Outlook. It sends a copy to the person filling out the form, and it sends a copy to my Outlook directly. So people can schedule time with me. Um, people use Calendly like this. Also, they embed it in their um, in emails. They'll put it in their uh, sig email signatures. I've seen it embedded. I don't have it embedded in my email signature, but uh, I do have it on my website. And then I have it set up where we can have several people monitoring it. So if I'm on vacation, actually, it won't even show my calendar. There'll be a gap there, and I'll, I actually have it set to work around me if I'm on vacation. So this is a really cool product. If I hop over here to my email, here's the event uh, right here. This is what I just typed in. I get notified immediately that Susie Smith's trying to reach out to me and uh, set up a time with me. But let me show you the other way I use it. Let me hop on here. Uh, let's see, right here, this is, uh, I have Chrome. Uh, so right here, I have the little C and it says Calendly meeting schedule software. If I click on it, I can pick the type of event I want to schedule. Mm -hmm. Now, um, 
you know how somebody wants to meet, set up a time with you and they'll say, oh, you know, what time are you available for a meeting? Instead of going back 50 million times with them in emails, I'll come in here and I'll say new ad hoc meeting. And then I'll look at my schedule and I'll say, how long do I want the meeting? I'll, I'm going to do a one hour meeting. That's what I want. I'm going to pick several different times I'm available. This is my current schedule so I can work, you know, I can work around what I have. And then I'm going to say finish and share. Then I can hop over to my email. Liz, can you still see my email box here? Yes. Okay, I want to make sure it didn't uh, change it. Say new email. Now I know you didn't see that, so I'll bring it over here. Can you see my new email message? Yep. And then I can say uh, to Liz, um, and then I can do a paste and it drops in the times. So hmm. what she'll do, she'll get this email and she picks one of those, she clicks on it and it goes right on my calendar. And now we're not going back and forth 50 million times finding out what works or what doesn't. And you're not doing it through like a doodle poll, which might be a little few more steps than this. So that's- Yeah, I like, it's right in my Chrome. Um, I got it integrated in my browser. Um, that's the way I like to do it. Uh, and I got it right here, it's, it's, it's an extension. Um, now I will tell you this, I will disclaim here, I am not using the free version. And I will tell you what the difference is. With the free version, you only get one call type. When you have the paid for version like I have, you see I have a LinkedIn one, I have a one hour consult, I have a website one. I do different ones so I know where people are coming from. Like I'll know immediately, oh, this one came from my website. Oh, this one came from a LinkedIn. Oh, this one came from a Zoom call, Zoom webinar I'm doing. Um, so I can track them for uh, you know marketing purposes. But if you get the free one, you at least get one type of call to set up and I suggest you try it and even, even if you just use it for setting up meetings and conferences it'll save you a ton of time you can go back and forth and do that um, it does integrate with your email the way they are doing it is secure because I was very concerned about this too the last thing I want to do is give somebody permission to get into my emails but how they are doing it is in line with Microsoft's recommendations and keeping everything secure so I've done a little due diligence with this company. They're cool, really love their product. You can embed these links in all kinds of places. And yes, people use this on my website. We have had several, just they pop right in. They love to just schedule right on my calendar. Um, so I highly recommend you check out Calendly. So that would be my second, um, my second app to share with you guys. Any questions? All right. So the last one, well, the third one, I should say, it's not the last one, I'm going to talk about, and I know you've all heard of it, is Teams, Microsoft Teams. And the reason it's on my list is they do offer a free version. You do not have to pay for it, and I will provide a link for that, or you can actually Google download Microsoft Teams, and you'll find the link for it, but I will have it on here. Um, let me share my screen. Um, for those of you who are not real familiar with it, let me show you here what it does. Let me get our pictures off there. So this is a picture of my current Teams and the way I'm using it. So the work from home stuff came along. I was using Teams long before work from home. But uh, Teams is like a Facebook, like a privately owned Facebook. So I use it with my staff so that we can chat back and forth we can share files, we can do video conference calls, we can do phone calls between each other's, each other. Um, and what I really like is that it's secure. So I can tell my HIPAA and my financial clients to use it as well because the way Microsoft hosts it and the way they handle the security on it is in line with those types of organizations uh, regulations. So it's a very secure platform. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple things on how we use it that you may not know about Teams. Uh, for example, right now, as a, uh, at the team I have pulled up, there's different teams with different people that are members. This team happens to be my marketing one. I'm actually sharing it with people that are outside my company. So this is this team, and this team only is shared with two people from my marketing firm. And we discuss marketing strategies. And what you're seeing on here is we're exchanging files, ideas, 
Um, we host calls on here. Um, but one of the cool things you can do if across the top, we actually have, you can pin files. And this is, it happens to be an Excel spreadsheet from February where we're sharing this with each other. It's made into a calendar, but it's truly an Excel spreadsheet. And you can see I have Excel's functions on here. You can embed an Excel file on here or a Word file. There's like dozens of different kinds of files you can embed and you can share them with each other. Um, a couple of caveats with Teams that Microsoft kind of puts in the small writing that you may not know about. They do not back up the content on Teams. So the spreadsheets and stuff I put in here, I make sure I have a second copy somewhere else. Occasionally, Teams will have a hiccup and stuff will get lost. Um, there are some third-party products that you can buy to back it up. In fact, Microsoft recommends you do that. We actually sell one of them. Um, I actually do use it, so I'm not, I still keep two copies of my stuff just in case, but it's important to know that Teams alone is not a safe and secure way to keep your data. You really should have a backup of it or keep a copy somewhere else of important data. But uh, anyway, we can chat back and forth one-on-one. -on -one. We can share files. Um, you can open up Teams to outside companies like I have. Um, you can share files. We also have teams for certain clients where we actually go down here and discuss IT problems, share files, and go over projects with them. So those are the few of the features of teams that I think a lot of people don't realize that teams can do. Um, I, I would love to demonstrate the phone part, but I can't because as soon as I do that, it's going to take my video camera away and I can't really demonstrate a call, but I can call, I can go into a team like this and go over here and do a meeting and that will immediately start a meeting and call all the people in the team and immediately invite them in. It's really cool. Um, love this for work from home. We do a morning meeting every day of all our staff. So everybody checks in and then everybody checks out the end of the day with the post too. And they also, we keep up with each other what's going on. People who are going to lunch or going stepping out or they're going to a client. We have different channels that show all those activities as well. So um, again, you can get this free. I'm sorry. Um, does Teams have a calendar function where you have a shared calendar? I know it, it hooks into yours, but- It's got my calendar there. So if I click on that, you're gonna pop into mine. I, well, as you can see what we did, we did a, a spreadsheet and designed it as a yeah. calendar and that's how we shared it. So I don't believe it does, but there's, I am not guru on everything with Teams. Uh, um, I will also tell you if you've got people using Slack, like one of our clients is using Slack, we actually hooked our Teams and the Slack together and we share a channel on there. So they're using Slack, we're using Teams and they're very similar products, but we can talk to each other through this. Yeah, we've kind of struggled with going back and forth on, on how to do like a master calendar for a company and we use our Outlook calendar, but nobody's really always happy with <laughs> how it works. Like we're, it's kind of hard to maneuver. So I wondered if Teams actually had that. But. You know, I'd have to look into, into that because um, I know if I click calendar, it's just going to bring up mine because it, you know. Yeah that's what's going to pull. I don't think you can, but I can't swear to it because there's so much to this, you know. Yeah, I don't think so it was either. I just kind of wondered if that was one of them. Yeah. Um, and you can do audio only calls on this too. That's what the little calls there, but you can do the video, the same camera you're using for Zoom, you can use on here, same camera, same mic, everything works in here. So it's pretty cool. So if you haven't checked out Teams, they do have a free version. Do recommend you uh, check that one out. And that brings us to um, our last product. And this is probably my favorite one. This is the one I use just tons. And that is Foxit PDF. So let me pull that screen up and let me do a new share. Okay, so Liz, can you see a PDF form, a health benefits claim form? Yes. Okay, so I, I hate getting a PDF form in that you cannot fill out on a computer. And you guys know what I mean. Gosh, government tax forms are notorious for that. Um, as you can see, this is a health benefits claim form. 
from Humana, a current one. You can't fill this in. They want you to print it out, fill it out with a pen, scan it in and send it back. I hate that. Um, in Adobe Acrobat, the pro version, as you know, is if you ever seen the pricing on that, it's just through the roof. I mean, it's a great product, but it's really, really expensive. So um, I stumbled upon Foxit about, gosh, going on two years. And I can't tell you how many clients we've introduced to it. Now, Foxit does have a paid for version. When you do the eval, they're going to give you the paid for, paid for version with all the benefits and everything. You don't have to buy it. If you don't buy it, it'll go to the free version automatically. And then occasionally they'll keep bugging you. But right now, they have got me sucked into uh, an evaluation of 14 days on the paid for version again, but I, I don't buy it. I just use the free one. And I'm going to show you the, just a couple of features that I use the most on this that totally makes it worth it to me. So filling out this form, and I've used this for a previous demo, so it's got some places already filled out. But right here on the home page, you have this typewriter feature. You can come in here and you can drop it anywhere you want on this form. And you can just type. I love it. So I can fill out the forms even if they don't, even if they're not form, you know, they, even if they don't make them fillable, I'll fill them out for myself. So I can go in here and type stuff in. And it's right here on the home. The other cool thing, this highlight button is real neat. So if I'm sending something and I, I want somebody to be really pay attention to a certain part, I can highlight it in yellow. Um, so you can go through here and highlight certain, even the stuff, well, okay, it's, this is something I've typed before. It's not gonna let me highlight stuff I've already typed, but I can highlight different parts of this as I see fit. Really cool feature. Now, at the bottom, you know, they want you to sign. Well, I don't want to print this out, sign it, and scan it back in. So I have done, and I've done this ahead of time, I have scanned into this program my signature. And all I have to do is grab it. As you can see, I'm uh, hopefully you can see me dragging it down here and I'll put it here, employee signature and click once and it'll drop it in. And if it's too small, I'll make it bigger. If it's too big, I can make it smaller. I can move it around. I can put it wherever I want. Um, and that's it, there's my signature. So I can do this whole form without having to print it out, not having to get out a pen, fill it out and scan it back in. Um, some other cool features of this, you can scan into this from your scanner. I don't, have, I don't have a scanner hooked up to my computer, so I cannot demo that. But if you have your own scanner, you can scan files into this product directly as well. Um, and these, by the way, these, the highlighting, the typing, and the signature, that's part of the free version. You don't have to pay for that. Love it. Use this all the time. And when I hit save, it's going to say, hey, there's some signatures that have not been applied. Are you want to apply? It's kind of telling you, hey, you put a signature here. And I say apply all. And now it's become embedded into this document. It's part of it permanently. So really, really do love uh, Foxit PDF Reader. Highly recommend this. Uh, I don't even do the Adobe anymore. I, I just quit using it for this product. Um, I have done the paid for ones. You can do some really slick stuff um, on their paid for one, but just these features here alone me make, make to me makes the free one totally worth it. Totally worth uh, kicking Adobe Acrobat Reader out the door over. That's for sure. So let me go back to my screen here. Let me, oh, I've got too many windows open. So let me close this out. So um, Liz, can you see the, uh, on the agenda screen again? Yes. Okay, I wanna make sure I didn't lose you. Yep. So here are those URLs and these are again, a review. And this is the information uh, Liz and I will mail out to you uh, afterwards too. So if you're in your car or somewhere, you can't write these down. These are where to download them or get more information on these products. Uh, the Microsoft team one URL is really long. They don't make it easy, um, but, but that is it. It will take you there. Um, 
you can download it from there. Um, and it is free as of, of now. Uh, they may change that in the future, but right now it's free. Um, the Foxit software one, I will tell you, you want to scroll, when you get to that screen, you'll want to scroll down because the at the top, they're going to have their paid for versions. You want the Foxit reader product. That's the free one. So scroll down and as soon as you sign up to get that, they'll put the fancier one on for a 14 day trial. And like mine did, it'll say it's a 14 day trial, but at the end, don't have to pay it. They'll flip it to the free one and you can still do what I did. You can do the highlighting, you can do the typing and you can apply signatures on it. And I went ahead and linked the reader in the chat if you all wanna go straight to that. Okay. Um, and does anybody have any apps they'd like to share with us? Um, we can certainly, if you can put it in the chat or if you want, we can unmute you and mm -hmm. if you want to talk about one. I'm curious to see if anybody has an app that they use for um, scheduling posts on social media. I know there are a lot of them out there. Even Facebook has their own, but I'm kind of interested to see who has found that one is the easiest for scheduling social media posts throughout the month. Anyone? Uh, Greg raised his hand. I'll, un mm. I'll unmute. Uh, let's see. Can I unmute him? Can, can you hear me now? There yeah. you are. <laughs> hey, I just want to, Liz, I, I don't have an answer for yours. Well, that's okay. But I just wanted to mention um, the password apps. And uh, I think I've probably used OneSafe. There's a bunch of them. If you just go to your Apple App Store or I guess Google Store, if you have a Android type phone, but there's one safe, there's one password, LastPass. There's a bunch of them on there and uh, probably the most useful thing. I think I have like 72 passwords in mine mm -hmm. and I've used uh, one safe for probably the last five or six years. And uh, they're encrypted end to end. That's what you want to look for. There's a bunch of good ratings on a lot of them. But uh, if you're just diligent enough to, when you set up a new account or change your password, to you just take 30 seconds and go in your app and change them. You know, you'll always have them in your phone right beside you. And if you lose your phone or you damage your phone, um, most of them have, uh, you know, an iCloud backup or a cloud backup. And when you get your new phone, you just log in, and you'll be good to go again. So those are those are really time savers as far as if you have trouble managing your passwords. All right, cool. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome. Um, great, great, great apps, by the way. Yeah. Do you use any of them? Uh, I use Teams, of course, but uh, the rest of them I'm going to check out for sure because I definitely need at least two of those. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, Liz, to answer your question, we use Hootsuite to uh, schedule posting on social media. And they do have a free version and you're gonna add, and I'm not sure which one we're using. I think we're using the free version still because I think the free one, the basic one gives you a lot of options to start. Great. And if you ask me how to spell that, <laughs> you think it's hoot, um, oh, yeah, yeah. H-O-O-T like an owl, S-U-I-T-E dot com. I'll put it in the chat. And it's been around a long, long time. They were like, I don't want to say they were one of the first ones to really do that, um, to do the scheduling stuff. So, and I know there's tons of others and I'm just not familiar with them um, as far as that goes. Uh, we use constant contact for our newsletter. Anybody else got something they like for their newsletter? We also use constant contact. Yeah, I like it a lot. I don't know, Craig, if you're raising your hand again or if you just haven't put your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's, he may have just left his hand up. Anybody Sorry else? About that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, anybody else uh, use anything for newsletters? Okay. Uh, oh, somebody put in Mailchimp. Mm -hmm. uh, I've used. I used to use Mail Mailchimp. I went to Constant Contact. 
because I hate that the pictures don't always show up immediately, but with constant contact, they often do. And I don't know why it seems different between different newsletter companies. And I just kind of keep an eye on that. Um, okay, well, if we don't have any other questions or no, anybody else has any apps. Oh, somebody says wetransfer.com for sending large photo and video files. That's a good one. I don't, oh, have you heard of that one before, Liz? I haven't, but that's a good, you know. Oh, yeah. Because we have a lot of, we get problems with that without using Dropbox or anything. Yeah, yep. I have not used it. I, we have our, our own product that we use internally that allows me to share files internally as well as with outside world. But um, also, I use Teams for that. You can drop, I, I've not, I'm sure there's a size limit with Teams. Not sure off the top of my head what it is. But I do exchange a lot of uh, files through Teams as well. Um, all right. Well, if there's nothing else, I guess that will wrap it up and uh, we will send all these. Uh, oh, well, I do have one more thing to add um, and that we're wrapping up. Uh, we, I am offering a free dark web scan. I know we're the subject today wasn't cybersecurity, but if you're interested in what a dark web scan is, we will we'll run a report on your email address if you like and send that back to you and you can find out what emails and passwords have been exposed on the dark web. Uh, you can check that out on our website through uh, nextcenturytechnologies.com slash dark web. That's up right now. Just fill it out. I just need your permission to run it, and I'll reach back out to you. Um, most often what I see in those results are people reusing passwords. And, um, we partially redact the password, so you can see the first couple of characters, so you get an idea of how legit the uh, password is. Um, but in, in the report goes back cover several years. I've seen stuff go back to 20, as far back as 2013. Um, but we like to let people know if you see it on that scan, please change that password. Don't use it again. And of course, use different passwords for different platforms. Um, you can reach out to me via email. There's my email address, Tracy at nextcenturytechnologies.com. Uh, for more tips, we do a lot of uh, tips on Facebook and LinkedIn. Those follow, find me on Facebook and LinkedIn. And follow us there, and uh, we'll have we do a lot more tips out there as well for cybersecurity and uh, keeping your equipment safe because that's a big deal right now. Thanks so much, Tracy. It is you know super important. We had a dark web scan done by our IT company, and basically my password showed up all over the place. And now I'm getting emails, spam emails, with my password is like the subject. Oh, I know. yeah. My yeah. old password. So it's super <laughs> scary. And I went to, you know, it made me really think about using the same password for every website. Yeah. It was eye-opening and, you know, how places can basically respond back to you and not even be the person you're emailing. It's just crazy. So, yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah, reach out if you want to get one of those. Uh, be happy to, to run that through. And I think that's it for today, Liz. If there's no right. other questions. We will be posting this on um, usually on our Facebook group or page. Um, we post a recording of these. So, um, so thanks for tuning in. And if you missed something, you can always watch it there. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.